We exalt Jesus in this house this morning and we decree only Jesus will be saved in Jesus name. Give your neighbor a knife and say welcome to church brother. Praise God. Alright. This morning we fall in our teaching in the spirit by the spirit. Hallelujah. It's going to be my series throughout the month of, uh, of October. God help me. Praise God. I started teaching last um, on Friday, right? I started teaching on Friday in the Spirit by the Spirit. We said a lot about spiritual. I'm just going to continue today <laughs> because if I start the recap, the recap, I won't have enough time to do recap. So yesterday we spoke about the gifts of the Spirit. Say gifts of the Spirit. We defined them. We explained them. And um, I didn't really go into their operations or how they work. So this morning, I want to talk to you about um, how some of these gifts work so that um, you as a believer will see these things that work in your life. I long for a church that is given to visions. I long for a church that is given to the things of the Spirit where everyone everyone is sensitive to the move of God. Hallelujah. One of the reasons I love the things of the Spirit is because it proves to me and it proves to the world around me that my God is not dead. Say, my God is not dead. Now, if yours is dead, try mine. Praise God. Tell your neighbor, if your God is dead, try mine. Because dead gods don't speak. My God speaks. Say, my God speaks. So this for me is a lot of comfort. The fact that I know God speaks, He speaks to me, He speaks through men. It's a lot of comfort for me. Paul was speaking to his church. He says, um, you know, when this thing, when these gifts are working in you, when someone comes to the household of God and he sees the gift of revelation, Paul said the man will go on his knees and say, truly there is God. I remember many years ago when I had, when I, 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 I prophesied to a white man in the UK. This man believed, um, this man was an atheist. You know, many people that call themselves atheists, uh, they are just fighting what they don't know about. Because when you say there is no God, the fact that you have a statement God in that, the fact that you have a word God in that sentence is a proof that there is God. You get that? All right. There is no it means it might, it, it might connote that the supply of the thing is not available, but it does not take away the existence of that thing. If I say there is no rice, it means rice exists, just that there is no rice in my house. Praise God. So when a man tells you there is no God, he's just trying to fight what he doesn't understand. The, the statement there is no God, it means that there is God. Maybe you have not encountered him or you have not experienced him. Are you following me? So when I meet people like that, the best way to explain God to them is the gift of the Spirit. Not tongues. Not theology. Because the Bible you want to explain, you want to start reading, they've likely read the Bible. So I was prophesying in that meeting and I called and I walked up to the man. I said, your name is Steve. He said, yes, you could know. Somebody could have told you my name. And I said, okay. I said, you believe there is no God? He said, yes. I said, then why are you in church? He said, I followed my girlfriend. I killed my girlfriend. A white guy. I think at Naval Office or something. So when he said that, I laughed. I looked at him. Now I began to make inquiries in the spirit, which I will show you how to do today. I looked at the man. <laughs> I looked at the man and I said to him, I said, your daughter is missing. And she's been missing for so many years. I can't remember numbers of years now. And you prayed... You prayed, you fasted, you did all kinds of things to make sure you find your daughter, but till today you've not found your daughter. I said, my name is Faye Daniels. I am the move of God. I, I, I will tell you where your daughter is. And you will go and find your daughter this morning. And the man was like, are you serious? And I picked a piece of paper. I wrote out the UK poster code. And I wrote the address of where his daughter was at that time. The daughter was at a particular orphanage. An orphanage picked her up when she was missing. And she went to the place 
picked her daughter and came back to the meeting. And she knelt down. He said, I want to receive Jesus. <laughs> Praise God. Now, that's the kind of Christian I wanted to become. You don't have to be a pastor, but that's the kind of Christian I wanted to become. Hence, the importance of talking about the things of the Spirit. Praise God. Good. So, there is the benefit of living by the Spirit, walking in the Spirit. It helps you yourself. It helps the world around you. You are not distracted. You are not confused. You know what to do per time. You know what to do per time. You know what not to do. I understand the place of the gifts of a prophet. Yes. But beyond that, there should be the gift of the Spirit. One of my sons was talking to me yesterday and said, um, this is the word I gave this person, I gave this person, and that word is perfectly accurate. Sometimes your prophet is just for confirmation if you are living by the Spirit. Praise God. I said, that word is accurate. Praise God. Maybe he's becoming a prophet. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you live by the Spirit, when you understand the gifts of the Spirit and how they operate, it changes your disposition to life. You are given to seeing and knowing. But in this journey, be careful about your association. Because there was a time in my life I was working in the gift of the Spirit so well, and I began to make friends with people they call Christocentric in Nigeria. Praise God. Remember, I'm, I'm Bible-centric. <laughs> so, you know, there's a group they call themselves Christocentric. I'm also Christocentric, but not that slant. And gradually, gradually, I felt something was wrong with me. I began to think, because I was given to the things of the Spirit, I was given to miracles, to signs and wonders, to seeing and knowing. Like, okay, they don't do those things. And somehow, they, they slight those things. They talk down on it. I said, no, what does it matter? If somebody calls your name, well, don't you know your name before? What, what is the use? And, and when they began to say those things, I was like, okay, okay. And I began to see those gifts at work in me in those diving. And I began to see that I couldn't walk in the things of the Spirit again. And when people now called me to prophesy, there was struggle. Why? Association. If you are going to flow in the things of the Spirit, for no reason, you cannot choose to stay in the company of those that speak against such things. If you do, you are going to be destroying yourself. You are going to be creating setback for yourself. It doesn't matter how anointed the person is. For example, if you speak against light, I'll just block you. Because I'm a tighter. I don't want to hear your opinion about whether I should tighten or not. I just block you. Finish. That is me. Speak against the gift of the Spirit, I just block you. If I have hundreds of your messages, I just delete all of them. You know why? I'm protecting, I'm guarding the borders of my heart so that I can consistently stay in those things. Many times you think you have a flitter that you can separate it. Or, so, okay, in this area, I would flitter it, I would listen to this person. But in this other area, I will not. You wouldn't know when you fall into the trap. There is always a way that seems right. Praise God. It will always seem right. It will always seem right. It will, it, it will not appear wrong in the beginning. It will seem right. Because if it appears wrong in the beginning, you will detect it and run away. So it will seem right. Poison is never saved as poison. It's saved with a large portion of food. Am I right? Glory to God. So until I watched and as I heard again that Elisha was a man, was a prophet like I am. And he would look at the king and tell the king what happened in his bedroom. I said, okay, glory to God, I'm on the right course. Are you following me? So you will choose your path. You will have to choose your path. Say, I choose my path carefully. I live in the spirit. I live by the spirit. All right, yesterday I, I said to that the believer is a realm of the spirit. You remember? All right. And um, the reason the believer is a realm of the spirit because a realm means where spirit dwell. Heaven is a realm of the spirit because spirit are in heaven. Am I right? Good. So if a spirit is also in the believer, the believer is a realm of the spirit. The believer is not looking for realms. He is a realm of the spirit. So I'm a realm of the spirit. Good. Because the spirit dwells in him. God's spirit dwells in him. So it's a realm of the spirit. Now when this consciousness swallows you, you will begin to understand that everything around you was crystallized from the realm of the spirit. Are you following me? 
everything around you was crystallized from the realm of the spirit you know i told you yet last week i told you i said realities are in levels and what determines the levels of reality you experience is the energy level that is at work at the time gas is also um, gas is also actually liquid and liquid is also solid depending on the level of energy at work water is ice at zero degrees celsius it is um, water um, room temperature at 37 degrees celsius but it's also gas at what 100 degrees celsius so what makes a difference in whatever you are saying right now uh, what makes reality to you is the energy level at work are you following me so you understand that the world around you was crystallized or uh, crystallized from the spirit realm so the spirit realm that you that looks very abstract to you it's not so it's not abstract the reason it looks abstract to you is because you have a body you are a spirit but you have a body so you look at everything you see from the point of your body not the point of your spirit however if you look at the spirit's world carefully and you look at the solid world you see around you the bricks the trees and everything came from the spirit world you understand that it means these things also exist what in the spirit there are trees in the spirit there are lands in the spirit there are gold in the spirit praise god if you don't believe them someone wrote about them in the bible they held palm front in heaven praise god so it means there are trees there where did they get the palm from came from they came to your village to pluck it and took it to heaven it's not possible they have it there are you following me so if you understand that you are a realm of the spirit you begin to understand that the things you see around you they are crystallized from the spirit realm you know what it means again it means that somehow you have a creator's ability did you get that the thing you have a creator's ability if the spirit if god's spirit made the whole world and that spirit lives in me now glory to god do you get what I, it, those things when i read them in the scripture and i personalize them it gives me joy i don't know what it does to you but it gives makes me smile like ah, ah, this man say you too you are somebody you. praise god it gives me joy because that's the truth of scripture now as much as knowing that knowing that is not enough the next thing to do with that is to create a consciousness of that because uh, you believe that then after believing it rather you know i separated the word knowing and believing at the believers convention praise god uh-huh it is believing at least so knowing right all right so after you have known that then you after you believe that then you begin to create a consciousness about it you begin to see the world from that point it makes you live from above hallelujah it that is born from above is above all above all things say i'm above all things say it to yourself like you mean i say i'm above all things he that is born from above is above all so when you begin to see that it creates a consciousness in you many years ago many years ago now running to how many years now more than 12 more than 12 years i was traveling on Benin expressway i went to preach for a man of god and those days i was a young prophet i didn't know that time whether the spirit was subject to the prophet or the prophet was subject to the spirit you know the bible said the spirit of the prophet is subject to the prophet but there are times the prophet is just subject to the spirit he can't control what he sees or what he hears so at that particular meeting in um in Edo state in south south let me not mention the state i think i've mentioned this state already <laughs> in south south region of nigeria i was prophesying then one thing led to another then i i prophesied that um, or i revealed that the pastor's wife was doing runs with the driver so when i i it was a mistake i don't know why i said it why are you laughing at me praise god so i said it mistakenly so when i said it mistakenly i they asked me to drop the mic praise god it's their church so they collected the mic from me so me too i i ran away so but when i thought i thought i ran but you know it's like saying to jonah you can run you cannot run <laughs> or you can run you cannot escape so I ran to my boys, boys, let's go. Go to our hotel, pick our things, and, and we're going on our way. So uh, on, on my way back to Lagos, I was stopped. Now, I didn't say the pastor sent the person, but I was stopped. They were stopped by I scenes, and I was driving a message. My boy was seated in front. I was seated at the back. 
I know some of you must have heard the testimony in church. He came to church to share it. So I, I, the, the driver, the, the guy stopped us, parked in front of us, and like I was not the one driving. If I was the one driving, you can trust. Praise God. If you know me, now, I know the way I drive. I drive in the spirit. All the people that drive, all the people that drive in the flesh, I don't understand it. I drive in the spirit. You can't catch me. Forget. In the spirit, by the spirit. <laughs> That's great to drive. <laughs> but I was not the one driving that day. So they doubled the cross and they asked us to park. They brought out guns, like real guns, not toy guns. And the guy said, Who is Faye Daniels? I said, ah. Then my boy in front said, Why? I said, I'm the one. And the guy said, Come down. Your life has been paid for. All right. The normal response should be, Jesus paid for it, have you? But at that point, can you say, Jesus paid for it? <laughs> then. Why the guy cocked you? I said, calm down. I'm the one. I'm the boss. I'm the Faye Daniels. You should have sense that the boss will sit at the back. Uh, praise God. Now, when you are looking at the gun, do you have the confidence to see things like that? Like, by that, I know some of you, you just be crying already. Oh, you say, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down. <laughs> then you quickly jump to the end of the verse. Because that's most important. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? That's the path you want to recite. <laughs> you run there like, so I told the guy, I said, I'm the one. I said, he said, get that. I'm not getting down. And I said, you think I'm joking? The guy cocked the gun and shot it to the go. If your gun has been shot by your side before, let me see your hand. Like close to you. Huh. Something in you will pass out. Like, like I'm not saying far away. I mean, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, when I egg beat my heart, it's <laughs> Then the guy said, can you see his thought? Pointed at me. I said, get out from the car. And I looked at the guy. I said, I have dominion over that gun. I looked at him and said, I have dominion over that gun. That gun cannot hurt me. It was made from the earth. Praise God. And I have dominion over the earth. The man thought I was reading for him. <laughs> I said, this was not what I'm talking about. And the guy pointed the gun at me and shot. And nothing came out. Car. Ah. I said, What's wrong? He said, he asked his other guys to change the gun. The guy changed the gun. They threw the gun to each other. And he cocked it again, shot in the air. Shot. I said, what about, I said See, if you try to shoot again, that bullet will kill you. And he shot at me again the second time, and the bullet came out from the back and hit him. And the guy died. When the guy fell down, others ran away, and I drove off. Praise God. You know what happened there is consciousness. Nothing else. Nothing else. Nothing else. And those things, it, it, um, it's how you live from the Spirit. It's how you live from the Spirit. When that thing gets to you, when it swallows you, when it swallows you, you look like, is it that you look like a dynamite? Or people don't just understand your ways. You know, the Bible says, the man that is born of the Spirit is like a wind. No man knows where he comes from. No man knows where he goes. No man knows. Now, don't say the point gun tomorrow to at you tomorrow. And you have the chance to run and you don't run. You say, me too, I have dominion over that gun. Mm. Praise God. The life of faith is lived by the Spirit. And when it's lived by the Spirit, you don't, there, there is no stereotype response to the things of the Spirit. Is the state of your heart at that time. Praise God. I've been chased before and I ran and I kept driving. <laughs> that one too, I was led by the Spirit. <laughs> you must understand the difference. So don't think the Spirit one was the one that they were shooting and saying, God cannot walk in. Both of them, they are in the Spirit. Praise God. Archbishop said, thieves came to his house and Lord said, run. And he carried him, he jumped the front fence and he ran. And there was a time they came, I said, drop your guns. And they dropped their guns. Both of them are in the spirit. Hallelujah. <laughs> so, <laughs> choose the spirit one that you want to choose. <laughs> Alright. So, things in the spirit. We'll focus on revelation or gifts today. In the spirit, there is hearing, there is knowing, there is seeing. The believer that is born of God, that is in the spirit, he has the ability to hear, to know, to see. Yesterday we talked about revelation or gifts. We talked about discerning of spirit. I told you discernment is not a spiritual gift. If you don't believe me, go and listen to what I taught yesterday. 
There's what we call discerning of spirit, not discernment. There's what we call um, word of knowledge, word of wisdom. These are the three revelational gifts. Then we now found out how this gift is communicated. It's communicated by prophecy. And the book of gift. But so today, today I want to talk a little more about uh, revelational gift. In the book of Amos chapter 3 verse 7, the Bible says that the Lord, surely the Lord does not do nothing unless he reveals his secret to his what? To his servant, the prophet. So whatever the Lord is revealing um, to man, it's called secret. Praise God. Because that man is not expected to know such things. Right. Um, but in, in hearing God, th there is what we call voices. There's what we call seeing, hearing, and knowing. Is it possible to hear voices today? Because I hear people say, just stick to God's word. Stop looking for voices. Yes. I will always advise the believers to stick to God's voice, God's word. How, how do you look for voices when you have not even heard the one that is written? You are looking for voices external. There is a voice that has been written into a letter. Read that one finish. I, if you are a believer and you have not read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, I'm afraid of you. And if you are a believer for more than one year, born, more than one year rather, and you have, or two years, let's say two years, and you have not read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation, you have a problem. You need to fix that problem. Because primarily, that is God's message to you. I've read that book, I've read the Bible more than 36 times, or 37 times, back to back, over, 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 over. Praise God. Because that's primarily God speaking to you. If you don't understand that speaking, you won't understand the other one. There was no book for Samuel to read. That was why when God called on Samuel, he didn't know who was talking. Praise God. So when he heard Samuel, Samuel, he said he didn't know what to say. He went to, he said, he went to the boss. He went to Eli. He said, I'm hearing Samuel, Samuel. He, does, he doesn't know how God calls. But when you read God's speaking, it's written down, it helps you. So it's possible to hear God's voice, but primarily first enthrone the Lordship of the Word in your life by studying the Word. In the book of Acts, chapter number 9, verse 3 to 8, I won't read it for sake of time. Uh, Paul was on the road to Damascus, or Saul, you call him Saul, you call him Paul. Paul, his name was not changed to Saul or Paul. Saul is Paul. The way he is, all I do Praise God. All right. So Paul was Saul. Saul was Paul. Are you following me? Good. There was no part of the Bible that says his name was changed. So he had an encounter, and in that encounter, he saw a light and he heard voices. He heard voice audibly. The people around him even heard the voice, too, but they didn't know the meaning. So it's still possible to hear God's voice today. Because a dispensation started when Jesus died and rose. It's called the last day dispensation. And Paul's encounter was in the last day's dispensation. And you are still also in the last day. Do you understand what I'm saying at all? Good. So it's still possible to hear voices. God still speaks audibly. He speaks audibly. Now that said, hearing, knowing, and seeing as a believer is a gift to the believer. But it happens as God wills. God can choose to speak to you about the thing. He can choose not to speak to you. Sometimes when people ask me, how do you flow in the things of the Spirit? I say, sometimes the, the, the place to start is not to force it. If God is ready to speak, let him speak. If he's not ready to speak, he should not speak. Are you following me? That's the first place. Don't try to force it. When you are trying to force God speaking, you are going to get into hell or you are going to hear your grandmother or hear your mother-in-law. Praise God. So you must learn to follow his speakings the way he speaks. Irrespective of how uh, he sounds to you. You don't need to force his speaking. So there is hearing, there is knowing, and there is seeing. So you have to say, I can hear, I can know, and I can see. Good. Now, Hearing can happen in the heart as, as impression. It can happen audibly. Knowing happens in the heart as impression. And seeing happens before you. So today I'm going to look, take a look at seeing. 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 I'm going to look at seeing. I'm going to take a look at seeing. Seeing. Understand firstly that seeing into the realm of the spirit and seeing things, God revealing things to you is clearly taught in scripture. In the book of Joel chapter number 2 verse 28. The prophet spoke about what will happen. He says, And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters will what? Shall what? Prophesy. Your old men shall what? And your young men shall what? All right. Now, don't, don't mind the classification you have in this text. 
Because, follow me carefully. Because in God's kingdom, there are no male nor female. I'm saying this for the first time now. In God's kingdom, there are no male or female. No Jew, nor what? Greek. So when he says to you that your old men shall dream dreams, your young men shall see vision. Don't say I'm an old man, so I'm looking for a dream. What is old in God's context? God is ageless, so what is old to him? You didn't hear me. What is old to God? Is it 1,000 years or 100 years? So you think you are 100 years, so I'm old, so I should be dreaming dreams. No, that's not what the text is saying. In God's context, what is old? You can't tell. Because the man that is telling you, your old man shall dream dreams, the man is ageless. So how do you define old? Because my definition will always be relative to who I am. Did I speak to somebody? Am I getting you blessed? Good. So when he says, my, your old man will dream dreams, your young man shall see vision. He was not talking about classes of people or kinds of people. In the kingdom, there are no male nor female. In that text, it's only telling you what is available when the Spirit is poured out. He said there will be prophecy. There will be dreams and there will be vision. Whether you are male or female, old or young. Did you get that? Are you following me? So this is available by God's Spirit. It's available by His Spirit. However, however, also understand that before you got born again and before God's spirit was poured on you or before you received the person of the Holy Ghost, you were dreaming dreams. Am I right? Or you didn't dream before you got born again? You were dreaming. And you, you see, I'm unbelievers today that does not have the spirit of God poured into them or in them that still dream. So it means that dreaming or seeing, having dreams or seeing vision is a natural ability to man. However, that natural ability can be a However, the Spirit of God can be superimposed on that natural ability and it is used by God. Singing is not a gift of the Spirit. Praise God. Music is not a gift of the Spirit. Are you following me? Good. However, God's Spirit can come on the singer and it becomes, and, and it is now used by the Spirit. Are you following me? Same with your dreams, same with your vision. So when you are born again and you have the spirit of God, the spirit of God can take over your dream and your vision. So that's what that text is saying. Now follow me carefully. How do you understand when a vision is delivered to a man, when he's ministering in the spirit? If you look at me carefully now, the way I deliver my word of knowledge or wisdom or the way I minister, if you, if you are the one that is very, very observant, you will know whether I'm ministering by vision or by impression. You would know. The way it is communicated, you would know. Because many times, visions are descriptive. They are descriptive. You'll be describing the place, explaining something. They are descriptive. They are not like impressions. Paul said, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. So there are visions from heaven. And there can be visions from your flesh. And there can be vision motivated by malaria. Vision can be motivated by poverty. Vision can be motivated by lack. Anything can motivate vision. All those YouTube vision, many of them, is poverty. That's motivating them. That's motivating them. A lady with hair red beret, flowing gown, no earrings. So yes, I saw a preacher in hell. I had a vision. That vision is not the vision from God. It's poverty that's motivating that vision. Or malaria, one of the two. Praise God. Those things can motivate vision. But today we are talking about heavenly vision. Heavenly vision. Take note that all vision, every vision is a revelation. Every, every heavenly vision, every vision from God is a revelation. However, every revelation is not a vision. You can have a revelation that's not a vision. Revelation can come from different means. Impressions, the word, and all of that. It can come from various means. Now, take note that your, your, sometimes your vision can come through the tool of your imagination. But it's not. Because many times, your imagination is also a gift from God. And God can minister through you with the use of your imagination. There are tools also. So, is vision a gift of the Spirit? No. But it's a tool through which the gifts of the Spirit operate. Is vision a gift of the Spirit? No. But it's a tool through which the gift of the Spirit what? Operates. You know the beautiful thing about vision? 
the blind sees better. Because you don't need your eyeballs to see vision. Say to yourself, I don't need my eyeballs to see vision. You don't need them. You don't need them. Paul was blind. In the book of Acts chapter number 9, verse 3 to 8, Paul was blind. And he saw a vision. So a blind man can see vision. However, in my opinion, I think, in my opinion, I say, I think your sight in that vision. Because many times when you are seeing the vision, you don't even know which one you are seeing. Whether you are seeing the picture before you, or you are seeing the, whether you are seeing the picture before you for real, or you are seeing something that God is revealing to you. You don't know which one. That's why many times when I want to flow in the things of the Spirit, that's why I shut my eyes. You know why? Because I don't want my eyes to hinder my vision. Hallelujah. Visions and prayers. Um, Daniel fasted and prayed and he sought a vision. It means that when a man wants to be given to vision, he must take his prayer life seriously. Because prayer and fasting makes you susceptible to visions. The man fasted and prayed for 21 days and vision came and he saw. And he saw. So if you want to be given to visions, you need to be given to prayers. You can pray so well and you tell God, God, in this meeting, I want you to give the man of God a vision for me. Prayer can actually cause someone to see a vision for you and it can cause you to see a vision for yourself. Are you still following me? Are you still following me? You're not talking. Are you still following me? Now, when you see a vision, Many times I hear questions like, so I saw a vision and um, the vision disappeared. I just saw a vision like a flash. Am I right? Something just came like a flash. Because they are open visions and they are closed visions. So open visions are the ones you see just right before you. I call closed visions the ones that just come like a flash. How do you turn closed visions to open visions? Or how do I see vision and I just stay with it and I can look at this vision for as long as I want to see it? Is it possible? Yes. Yeah. Is that an example in scripture? Yes. In the book of Acts, there was a young man, Peter. Acts chapter number 10. From verse 9. Let's read. Then the next day, read for me everybody. Want to go? Look at the screen. The next day, as they went on their journey and drew near the city, Peter went off to the house stop to pray. About sister, you see what led to a vision. What was it again? What was it again? Prayer. So when people tell me, um, uh, Bishop, um, I want to go into politics. Who will win this election? I said, Don't worry, I'll pray. Because when I pray, I will see. Because I understand how it operates. Now look at it, verse ten. Now, then he became very, very hungry and wanted to eat. Can you see? I told you, I said some visions too can be influenced by hunger. Because hunger can determine the kinds of things you will see in the vision. Read on. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance. Okay, let's go. Verse 11. Of the earth, wild beasts, creeping things, and the birds of the hair. And he, his voice came to him, Rise, Peter, kill and eat. So in the vision, there are voices. So in the vision, there could be a voice. So you're open to vision. Be ready to hear. Don't just say, I'm seeing a vision. I'm not hearing anything. No. When you're watching a movie, is there no voice in the movie? Good. So they came a vision and there were voices. And the voice came to him and said to him, Peter, kill and eat. And what did Peter say? All right, hold it. Now listen carefully. When Peter saw that vision, and that vision came like a TV, and he was hearing the actors in the vision, and he says, Peter, arise, kill and eat. If Peter kept quiet, that vision would have ended there. Did you hear me? 
if Peter had kept quiet, that vision would have ended there. Peter did not keep quiet. Peter responded. But Peter said, no, not so, Lord. It means that by the authority of Scripture, you have the right to argue with the Lord in vision. However, the Lord here was not God. It was not Jesus. The Lord here was angels. Because angels were called Lord. I'm going to go there today. I'm going to get there. Then he said, not so, Lord. I've never eaten what? anything common or unclean. It means that your knowledge and past experience can what? Influence visions. You don't go into a vision or you don't try to walk in the spirit with pre-notions. That is where many believers get it wrong. Many ministers get it wrong. When they say a fine lady, she's a banjee, she's my water. Why? Pre-notions. They read it. They read it in one book. Fire, one fire prayer. One fire demon. Whatever. And there are books of interpretation of dreams and whatever. When you see money in your dream, you see you, you see you'll be broke. Who told you that? When you see snail in your dream, it means that your life will be slowing down. Scam. Who said that to you? Oh, those things are not. They are not. That's not how visions are interpreted. You don't need a book on how to interpret dreams and visions. You don't need it. You don't need it. Are you following me? Because uh, there is no omniverse interpretation for vision. There is no universal interpretation. That's what I'm trying to say, right? There's no universal interpretation for a dream or vision. So anytime you see this in your dream, this is what it means. Yeah. Or in a vision, this is what it means. No, it's not true. Peter said, no, not Lord. I've never eaten anything unclean. Read on verse. And the voice spoke to him again. So can you see? The movie extended. He extended the vision through communication. Hallelujah. He extended the vision through questions. And he said to him, No, I won't eat it. Okay. And the voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has called, what God has cleansed, you shall not call common. That is common means unclean. Next verse. And this was done three times. And the object was taken up to him. So, The vision was repeated three times. Peter kept arguing and kept saying no. Yes, no, no. The angel said no, don't call it unclean. He said no, I call it unclean. Don't call it unclean, I call it unclean. Don't call it unclean. Or they were arguing. In the vision, they were arguing. I prophesied to somebody and the person met me before the meeting and the person told me his name. Forgotten. But let's say the message said I'm Emmanuel. But while I was ministering, I saw a vision about it. And another name was mentioned. And the Lord said to me, in the vision, the Lord said to me, that is his name. I said, no, that's not his name. I remember he told me he's Emmanuel. The Lord said, no, that is his name. I said, didn't you tell me you're Emmanuel? The guy said, confirm, yes, I'm, I told you. I said, Lord, did you hear him? He said, he's, not, he's Emmanuel. You are saying that is not his name. I said, is that like your second name? The Lord said, he's not even Emmanuel at all. And we're arguing the vision. I said, okay, finally, the Lord said, I should tell you that this, I don't, and you said, yes, that's my name. Then why did you mention Emmanuel? Then he said, um, because of some things, I changed my this and that, uh, that document, and I've been telling everybody around here that I'm Emmanuel, so. But that was not the name he was named with. So if you are not in the spirit, people will, so vision can be retained, post. You can play vision like movie. Play it, fast forward, and say, okay, okay, rewind. What did you show me that time? Take it back. And they take it back. Then they bring it forward, fast forward. Okay, pause here. Uh, let me look at this very well. So sometimes in a vision, I might see someone's face. I may not hear the name. And I'll start looking for the person in the chat. I, oh, I saw a face. So you see me walking around like, I saw a face. I saw a face. It's because of something I've seen in the vision. The pause, just keep that place there. Let me look for the person. So when you see the face, you look at the person. You look at the vision, you look at the face. Okay, correct. You are the person. Okay. Hallelujah. That is how the activity of the spirit with the vision works. Visions are communicated by angels. If you have ever seen a vision, it's a proof that you have the activities of angels around you. Visions are communicated by angels. In the book of Daniel, chapter number 9, verse 20 to 23, 
this man Daniel was praying, he fasted and prayed. He wanted to know the future of the Jews and of when the Messiah will come and all of that. He fasted and prayed to let him know that prayers we always need to vision. And then the angel appeared to him. His name was Gabriel. Now, while I was speaking in prayer, the man Gabriel. The man now, Gabriel was not, he's not a man like man. But man Gabriel, we know Gabriel is an angel. The, the man Gabriel, where is it again? Yeah, keep it there. Just keep it there for me. The man Gabriel, whom I had seen in the vision at the beginning, being cursed to fly sweetly, reached me about the time of the evening offering. Verse 22. And he informed me and talked to me and said, Oh Daniel, I have come forth to give you what? Skill to, to what? Understand. At the beginning of the supplication, the command went forth, went out, and I have come to tell you, for you are greatly beloved. Therefore, consider the matter and understand what? The vision. Angels bring vision. They even explain visions to you. Hallelujah. You know why they do that? Hebrews 1, 14 says they are servants. Ministering spirit. Sent to minister to those who will be heirs of salvation. So how do I do all of this that Bishop is talking about? You can pause, play, everything. It's your heart. You don't say you are looking at vision. You are angel, pause, 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 pause. You are forward, forward, forward. Rewind. They are thinking about the, the pastor has gotten mad. Uh -huh. They are finally caught him. Or you are ministering to your friend. I say, I see a vision. Pause, pause. Play, play. Rewind. Okay, draw, draw. Wait, wait, wait. Uh, they was, uh, the, Lord say, the Lord is not saying anything. No. They will run away from you. They will run. So all those conversations, they happen in your heart. They happen in your heart. They happen in your heart. You pause with your heart. You rewind with your heart. You fast forward with your heart. You say, bring it back. Everything in your heart. Your heart is where you communicate. Hallelujah. All right. In Matthew 17, 1 to 9. Matthew 17, 1 to 9. I, I want us to look at, at visions, interpretation of visions. All right. Because many times people think, like I said earlier, they think uh, the way to interpret vision is, um, is by what you see. I saw a snake, I saw water, I saw blah, blah, I saw blah, blah. No, that's not vision. That's not how visions are interpreted. So how do I interpret vision? How do I know the meaning of a vision I've seen? How do I know the meaning of a dream? How do I know? An example is what happened at the Mount of Transfiguration. Jesus and his boys. They were on the mount. Three of them. And um, something happened. Let's read. Okay, let's just go from verse 2. And he was transfigured before them. His face shone like what? The sun. And his clothes became as white as the light. And behold, Moses and what? Appeared to them, talking with him. So in the vision, they talk. Many people thought older than. Ask anybody, are you listening? Do like this. Are you listening? Many times, people think uh, the amount of transfiguration experience happened physically. It didn't happen physically. You see that at the end of the text, that it was a vision. So in this vision, they were talking to him. In verse 4. And Peter said to Jesus, Lord, it is good for us to be here. If you wish, let's make three tabernacles. One for you, one for Moses, and one for... Be careful of interpretation of dreams from your disciple. When they like you, they interpret, your, they interpret anything. They can, just, they can interpret you out of your destiny. Be very, very careful. Guess what? Did you notice that from verse 1, verse 2, verse 3, Elisha and um, who? Moses, Elijah and Moses never introduced themselves. They didn't say, Ma, I am Moses. Ma, me, I am Elijah. Can you see my beard? I'm Elijah. I was the one that caught that fire from heaven. Me, I'm the one that parted the rest. No introduction. Did you see that? But Peter knew who they were. 
It means that in your vision there is knowing. There is knowing. There is knowing in your vision. He just knew who they were. He didn't ask Jesus, who are these people talking to you? No. There, there is knowing. They just knew, he just knew that this is Peter, this is Moses, this is Elijah. They ne- he never saw their pictures. I hope you know. There were no pictures that time. The, even, the, even the time of Jesus, there was no picture of Jesus. The Jesus you are putting in your house is not Jesus. It's an actor. <laughs> Praise God. Uh, so if you had that calendar, go and remove it. You are worshipping an actor. Mm-hmm. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So there were no pictures of Moses, no pictures of Elijah. No. But there's a, there was a knowing. So the knowing was accurate. But interpretation of the vision, it was not accurate. That was all he knew. Then after the encounter, he wanted to, he wanted to um, create a monument around the encounter. Not that the interpretation was not accurate because he wasn't trying to interpret what happened there. He knew who he saw. Then he was trying to create a monument around the encounter. And I said, Jesus, let's put a booth for you here, for Moses and all that. So that we can come back here ten years time. I said, this was where Moses appeared. And this was where Elijah appeared. Jesus said, no. See, verse 5. And while, the, while he was still speaking, behold, a bright cloud overshadowed him. Now, wait, I like you to follow this step. Vision was going on. They were all seeing the vision. In the vision, Peter was talking to Jesus physically. Because that communication that was built a booth for you and for, for Elijah and for Elijah was not part of the vision. It was set outside of the vision. Are you seeing scriptures? And while he was speaking, behold, the bright cloud overshadowed them. And, it, and suddenly a voice came out of the cloud saying, this is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. Yeah, him. All right. And when the disciples heard it, the voice, they fell on their faces and were greatly what? Afraid. So that was what happened. Then I heard a voice saying, hear Jesus. That's not where I'm going to. Some say he's saying that don't hear the prophet, don't hear the law. Hear Jesus. But let's leave that for now. So in a vision, there is knowing for me. So when a vision is before my eyes, I can know. I can know things. You are not so external from your vision. I can look at the vision and know what the Lord is saying. The only thing I must make sure I do not do, I must not go into a vision with pre-notions. Like Peter. So in your vision, there is knowing. If I'm in the vision and I see loads of people, I see 10 people, and I just got an information with one, about one person, I stay with the one I've gotten. Now, listen, images and visions are connected. They are connected. The one that is revealed to you is what you should stay with. Don't try to find out others. Many times, when you stay with the one that is revealed to you, the one that is revealed to you will begin to show you others. So if I look at you and I hear a name, I can stay with that name. Ask questions about that name. That will lead to the gate to another person. Or to another person. Or to another person. Are you following me? So Peter had pre notion. He missed out the interpretation. He missed out the interpretation. However, what saved Peter? What saved Peter was the fact that after the vision, he sat down meditating. Verse 15 of the same chapter, Act 10 from verse 15 to 18. Peter sat down meditating. And while he was meditating, the interpretation of the vision now came to him. And a voice spoke to him again the second time. What God has cleansed, you must not call it what? Come on, now. And this was done three times. Go to verse 17. And while Peter wondered within himself, that's the meditative part of it, he wondered within himself what the vision which he had seen meant. Behold, the man who had been sent from what? Cornelius had made inquiry of Simon's house. They stood outside the gate. And they called out and asked Simon, whose name was Peter. And, and they called and asked whether Simon, whose name was Peter, was lodging there. And that was how Peter got 
the meaning of the dream. When you have a revelation and you don't know what you are seeing, the solution to it is meditation. By meditation, I mean quietness. When you have and you are the revelation, you are the vision, and you cannot place your hand on it, just stay still. That's why you don't you don't wake up from a dream, you don't get up from a vision and just pick your phone, Facebook. That's why when you pick your phone, the first thing you check is WhatsApp. You just wake up in one WhatsApp. And you just had a revelation. That's not the first thing. Pick it up. Notepad. That's where places will go. Notepad. Then you are writing out all the things you have seen in the dream. You are writing out the knowings you receive. The knowing you receive. I've seen someone. I, I, I remember I ministered to someone. She came to me and she told me she was having a dream about a brother. Brother successful, rich. Then um, she said she really feels the brother was a cultist and um, their mother died. She feels the brother used their mother for rituals. And now she has been seeing the brother in the dream and it looks like he's afraid the brother might also want to use her for rituals and everything. So I said, okay, let's pray. The moment we prayed, I said, the person is not your brother. The person is your husband. Because you were seeing your brother in the dream. That does not mean he's your brother. You can see your brother in the dream and the knowing you will receive is that he's your husband. It's because every time you woke up from that dream or, or you came back from that trance, you did not check your knowing. You didn't check your heart. You were so glued to the pictures so the things you saw and you gave it your own interpretation i said no it's not i said it's your husband so this is what you go do go home go do this go do this. it will be revealed to you and she found out that it was her husband praise jesus should i close there when things are not revealed to you that's what we call searching i told you so when god reveals things to you knowing seeing hearing God does that to you at his own will. I told you that prayer will make you susceptible to visions. However, there are times where God is not revealing anything to you and you want to know something. Should I teach that next week? Let's take that next week. My time is fast spent. 